Welcome in, BTS 53. We're going to continue on this, um, this deal with trying to do this James Brown dance. Uh, just as a recap, I've probably put in, um, I'd say, one work day of work on this so far. Um, it seems like a lot because we've been kind of going slowly month by month. And that's one of the challenges of doing <clears throat> uh, animation this way is that, uh, you know, it, it stuff takes time. And so capturing an hour or, or so at a time of it is kind of a, a less than optimal way to go. But we're going to try and continue moving as, as quickly as I can without sacrificing too much of, of what I, my process normally is. Um, for those of you who are new, this is the dance that we're doing. Uh, he does his little thing right here. And then I wanted to do this little spin move right there where he does that. We've gotten this far. So we've blocked out this much of it. So about half of the dance has been blocked out so far. And it's a pretty tricky part. But uh, now what we want to do is this little bit right here. Where he kind of does this little bit. And then I kind of cut and edited from different parts of a, of a longer sequence. This is like a two minute clip or something like that on, um, on YouTube. Uh, and he does this little jump bit right here. And there's some other stuff he does in between here and here, but I decided to kind of cut them together because I, I didn't want to just like copy exactly what he's doing. And even even when I'm animating this out, I'm not trying to copy exactly what he's doing. I'm I'm trying to stay close to it so that it feels like uh, a dance of his, but it's not it's not going to be perfect. Um, I just want to kind of capture the flavor of what's going on here. So. Um, with that said, we're going to pick up from here. We're going to try and get this bit right here where he does a little arm swing and this little drop out. So he does this little hop with his hips right here. It goes one, two, three. Okay, so that's one, two, three before he pops down. So that's what I'm going to try and focus on right now is working that out. And, and I actually have this um, kind of worked out here where the hips go one, one, two, and then he comes up and then they come down into this right here. So if you look at it, um, you know, his he, he's kind of starting right here after the turnaround, and then the hands do this little circle over thing, okay? Uh, the hips go one, two, and he comes up, and then bam, comes down right into this right here. So that's kind of that's kind of what we're gonna work on uh, today to try and bring that into into shape. Uh, we're up to, we've we've worked out this much of it, Okay, and all of this stuff isn't timed. It's just drawing, 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 because um, that's generally how I work. I work in terms of drawings, um, and I'll I'll time it out a little bit later on, and we'll get into looking at that. Um, hopefully, not too long from now. So when he makes this come out right here, he swings out. <clears throat> what I want to do is I need to kind of fix this drawing because it it matches um, this, but that's not what I want to match. I want to match this with the arms okay so he needs to spin out instead of having his arms kind of like this like when he comes out from the other one I want his arms to be down kind of like this okay so I just need to fix this drawing um, so when he comes down like this this hands down and this hands also down so he spins tight right there and let me go ahead and grab his elbow Come here, elbow. Oops, not what I wanted to do. There we go. And this elbow come in like so. All right. So let's go ahead and handle that first that first little hop. To get him that first little hop, what we need to do is get him just kind of straight up. So we'll get him more straight up. Get this foot back, kind of on the ground where it needs to be and just kind of work them out like yo and let's see get rid of the rotation X and all this stuff just to kind of keep it simple and you can do a little bit of there we go a little bit of that Straightens up, straightens up. In fact, what I'll probably do here, just to keep things real clean to work with, is I'll just take all of these things and 
kind of change the rotations. No, we don't want to do that. We don't want to zero that out. And we'll go ahead and zero this stuff out. A lot of times it's just easier, instead of picking up where we left off, to just sort of zero stuff out to get a sense of what's going on. Now I'm checking in this view because I, I'm, I want his hips to kind of stay where they are right there. I don't want him to jack back right there because I don't want it to feel like he's popping in space. So checking stuff in perspective view is, is very handy um, when it comes time to kind of making sure that stuff is playing the way it needs to. Um, you know, I animate to the camera as you see. I mean I'm definitely animating to the camera but sometimes you just have to check the physics of it in, in perspective or else you're just going to end up with problems. Okay, what I'm going to do for the moment here is I'm going to turn off his arms because I don't want to bother with them. I want to leave his head on though. Leave his head on straight. <laughs> and I just kind of want to work out that little hip hip jump thing. Okay, and I can layer in the arms on top of it later on. So the first part of the, the hip thing is he's kind of coming up. Kind of want him to set this thing up. And what I want to do is kind of, there's a couple of things I can do here. One, um, you don't want, in animation, you, you don't want to come up and hit something and then come straight back down in one, in one drawing. Because it makes it feel like it hits a wall and comes back. A couple of ways you can change that. Some people will just put it in there and blocking and they'll change it when they get into splining. I'm not a big fan of that just because it's so much work to go in and add all these spline tangents and all these things. So a lot of times what I'll do is I will create a drawing and then I will create another drawing that kind of shows the, the, you know, there's the first one and then there's another one kind of showing it slowing and then coming back the other way and then I'll make the other drawing down here where he kind of hits the bottom with his hips. And when he hits the bottom with his hips, we do want it to kind of bounce off the bottom because that's the general feel right in here is it just his hips kind of bounce, all right? But we want it to kind of come up and then come down right there. So when he comes up, I think what I want to do, um, let's see, key everything there, is I want to kind of create one more that will soften that that move over the top. So it's more like a bouncing ball because his hips are kind of be are acting like a bouncing ball, right? Well, a bouncing ball doesn't hit the top and come back hard like it hits a wall up here. That just That's not how it happens. What happens is the spacing comes up, and then there's another one, and then it comes down. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm creating this other key right there. It will make my cleanup a lot easier later on. So if you think about these things in terms of how, do you, how, how you make a bouncing ball and stuff, um, you, can, you can actually make your life a little bit easier if you just think ahead. Um, and that's what I'm trying to do right now is just think ahead and think, well, what, what kind of challenges am I going to have when the time comes to kind of do this sort of thing? All right, so he's kind of coming up. Right here, maybe we'll just make it down a little bit. Uh, that's That might be good enough. Coming up, up. There we go. Comes up there and then up just a little bit more maybe right here we can just do a little bit of thing right there with I'll get rid of this and then take this and just do a little something like that just so we can give them just a little bit more extension up alright so he's coming up right there so let's then just bam he's hitting down maybe not a ton but he's coming down and then we'll take and get rid of that. One. So there's the first bump down. Okay. When he hits that bump down, I want to leave his, his torso fairly straight right here because I want to build overlap into this. And I don't want to try and figure out later on how to build overlap. I'll build it in right now. So the way I do that is I, I kind of think in terms of what the shapes need to be as I'm building it out. So as he comes up here, he comes like so. Maybe his head's dragging a bit up here. 
See how his head's just dragging here? Okay. And then we're going to bounce right out of that. So it hits down. Now, some people would say, well, I'll just copy this right here and put it over there. I don't like doing that because then it feels like it's kind of just ping-ponging back and forth between two poses um, instead of, you know, feeling like it's, uh, you know, organically moving. So as he comes here, I want to bounce back off pretty hard from that. So I'm going to just do another one of these. And then what I'm doing here is I'm going to go ahead and going to build that overlap so that his chest is finishing the down part of the move as he's coming back up. Okay, so as he comes up, uh, this is using that counter-rotation concept that I like, where you rotate the hips back to rotate the chest forward. It keeps it balanced, but it makes things feel, you know, fluid and musculature and muscular. See that? It's staying, it's staying balanced, and his head isn't jacking too far forward. And in this instance, his head may be f too far back, so I'm just going to go ahead and kind of cheat that a little bit. And maybe need to rotate this back some because I don't like the head bouncing forward a bunch. I like it keeping I like keeping it fairly stacked vertically here. I'm doing too much scrubbing with the with the the mouse here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do my hotkeys because it moves faster for me. Okay, so as he leans forward there, I still don't like that, so I'm just gonna take this back just a little bit. There. I like the head coming down and leaning forward, but I don't like it moving forward because it just has a weird look to it. So just a little bit more of that collapsing sort of deal. And it's just a matter of, you know, degrees here. You may say, why are you taking so much time um, making sure that this all works together? Well, it's just because you're going to have to take the time eventually. Why not do it now where you can, you know, there's only drawings here to work with. And I know what I know what's going to work. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the time now and make it work. All right, so here he bops up again. Um, so let's go ahead and key everything there. And then what we'll do is we'll kind of straighten this out a little bit and take him up just a little bit more. And give him just a little bit here on his, get him up on the ball of his toes just a little bit again to kind of round off that bounce and here I don't really want the knees to, to pop straight um, that's one of the things that in CG when the knees pop straight stuff it's just it just jacks real hard um, you know you see it and it's very obvious So if you're going to straighten out the legs, make sure that you're going to do it at a point in time where it really makes sense to do it. Like right here, even even here at the top of this little thing, I don't want to I don't want to pop the knees straight because it just in 2D you can get away with it easier than you can in CG. Like even right here, it's just you can just feel it being a little there. It's just a little bit, you know, even there, it's still a little bit bent. You see it's kind of popping a little bit. But it's better than going completely straight. Okay, so he's up again. And now we can kind of start to flatten some of this business out. Because the overlap part is kind of done. We can still kind of overlap the head a little bit. So as he comes up. You know, the head can drag just a little bit there. All right, so he does a spin. He's up in the air, up in the air, bam, down on the pop, you know, for the little little hit. I'm going to push that just a little bit right there so it really reads. One. So there's one down, then he comes up. And there's his up again. So this is my habit key everything here. And then I'm going to go ahead and just 
make them down again. And again, I'm just going to go ahead and flatten out these feet. One, two, and you know, again, I'm going to do this kind of counter rotation business so that. Um, no, I'm sorry. I got ahead of myself there. On this way, I want him to kind of feel like, you know, he's he's straightening up more. On the way down, I want to straighten up. And so his head kind of coming up like so. His head's kind of kicking back a little too far right there. coming up a bit much too. I don't want that much overlap, I just want some. So he pops down again, so there's the first down and it's up. And we turn the corner slowly, instead of bouncing off a wall at the top, we have one more key from here to here to kind of create that bouncing ball feel. You can't create a bouncing ball feel with one key unless you're going to play around tangents. And again, you know, if you do it tangents, and the reason why I, I build two keys is because it's real simple. In this moon rig, there's about 20-ish controllers. Okay, so there's 20 controllers. Each of the controllers, I mean, I've, I've actually done the math. There's about 4.5 attributes per controller. So you're looking at, um, what is that? That's about, that's about 90 F-curves. Okay, so every key, every single keyframe, there's 90 F-curves, more or less. Um, you know, some are more active than others. So even if you bump that down and say there's 60 F curves, that's 60 times you have to build out and tweak little handles hard on the wrists. So what I like to do is I know that I got to do this. So I'll set a key here and I'll set a key here. I build it to be linear and comes in. You know, you just use, you throw it into just even clamp tangents and it'll, it'll, do this business right there almost for free. So that's why I end up doing this stuff. Okay, moving on. So he's down there and he's gonna come popping up one more time. So as he does that, we're gonna do that whole overlap business again. Where the head's kinda coming down. So he's going up but his head's still going down. That's really the that's really the the essence of of overlapping action is you know parts the leading part of the motion kind of finishes its business and starts going the other direction before the the children finish their job you know the parents are always always at the front of the line so there is a bounce down one up I think I'll just kind of fix that right there Bounce down two. I like that better with the hips being forward. And he's coming up. I don't like his how his head is jacking forward. See right there? I don't like it. It's going to create a pop. So, again, the way to handle that is to counter rotate the bottom so it feels more like it's just going straight down and rotating forward but not moving forward. It's a very common problem in CG puppets that you have to fight against. Uh, but I also don't feel like the, I don't like how his hips are kind of moving back in space either. So there's always, there's always kind of a balance you have to strike. All right, and as he's coming up, let's get these. Oops, use a toe twist instead. Kind of get a little business going here with, with the knees where they're kind of crossing a little bit. Now, I'm, I'm kind of doing this thing where his feet aren't doing a whole lot. If you look here, as he does his little hop, his feet aren't doing anything, and then he pops right there. So I'm trying to keep those, they're pretty still. And it's mostly just toe heel, toe heel kind of stuff right here. All right, and he's he's kind of bow-legged because that's just the way he is. But I kind of like how the the feet come together on a sort of like a you know I I kind of like crossing the knees just a little bit. I don't know why, but it just seems like it works on this character pretty well. 
so I'm just setting keys on everything so that I don't have any of those blank spots like I had in the timeline. Alright, that's better. Not great, but better. Alright, and then again, he's up at the very top. We're going to take and roll him up on the balls of his feet just a little bit more. Get him a little bit forward. Um, and on this one, I'm not going to have him straighten out quite so much. kind of want to build that that feeling of him kind of compressing up into a sort of a C shape and there's some things I'll have to do this little hip controller is really good for kind of creating smooth shapes in the body line right there um, trying to, again to create a nice clean shape on that edge and a clean shape on that edge CG puppets are really clunky. They don't make good lines. Um, you know, they generally just just make ugly lines. And what I want to try and do is create as many pleasant curves in the silhouettes as possible. So that's what I use these little hip things for mostly, um, just for trying to build lines into the into the shapes and the silhouettes. It's like making a good drawing, really. When you make a good drawing, you try and find a good line. All right, so he's really up here. He's down, he's up, he's really up. And his knees are kind of bent still a little bit right there, so we can we can actually push him just a little bit further. And maybe this one doesn't need to be bent quite so far. But we want this one to be, because this is the big one before he goes down into that whole thing. So we can actually push this up quite a bit because it's 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 the big one. So we can almost get him all the way up on his toes. Because this is this is going to be a kind of an anticipation before the big one where he pops his feet out and goes bow legged. Okay. Right here, we notice how this knee is popping. That's because we just need to do a little bit more to keep it from popping out straight. And even right here, straight-ish, but we don't want it to be perfectly straight. Because if it's perfectly straight, then you know that popping thing I'm talking about happens a lot. Right here, it's perfectly straight, so there, we'll do that. Alright, so you can kind of see that happening, that's taking place. He comes out of the spin. He comes from here, into this, and up into this. Now I'm looking at this, he might be able to just come from here and skip that drawing altogether. I'm not even sure why I put it in there. I'll have to go back and watch last month's video. Well, it was kind of a little a little delay before he kicks out there. And then on the kick out from there, he can kind of come up. So I can see that turning into the beginning of an action right there. Where he holds and then boom, like this. And then he holds that for a bit. Pops down. When he pops down, notice how he's coming back right there. Just want to fix that so it's more up. Down up. Get him forward a little bit, and then down, and he's going back again a little too far. So, you, you know, you always kind of have to check yourself to make sure it's working the way you want it to. You check for pops. I do it here. Why Why do it when it's all spline? Man, that's, that's a hard place to fix a lot of that stuff. So, again, it's just a matter of bringing all those decisions forward. If... And I have to admit, this is a—it's a—it's an experience thing. You make enough mistakes over enough years, you learn. Okay, I got to think about that earlier because it's a lot harder to fix it later. But if you can't see it, you can't see it, and there's not much you can do about it. You fix it when you see it. Um, the difference in experience really should be that you're able to see your problems sooner and able to fix them sooner. That's—that's that's really the benefit of experience. You fix them when it's easier to fix them. So as I step through this. He really is, he's really coming together really nice. So now what I want to do is just kind of do that little pop-out thing. So I want to get his feet out. Get the feet out. Um, 
get him down. And this is where we can kind of kick the knees back out. And let me take a look at my reference here again. Boom, he's, he's bent forward. You see his chest come forward right there? So as the legs come out, there's probably this drawing right here. I probably should go ahead and stick in there. But it's like, gosh, do you want to, you know, key every single frame? Sometimes you, you need to. Um, probably what I could do is on this previous one right here is just start to cheat these feet up a little bit like he's just like he's actually started to hop and that will probably be enough there we go that uh, that works the only thing is that when he comes up here this launch needs to be a little bit more significant so he's gonna come down here and then There we go. Just to give it a little bit more weight, he has to stay down a little bit longer. Let's see, going forward. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and use this and rotate it forward just a little bit, just because I don't, I don't like the shape of what's happening in the hips right there. Okay. All right, so when he's first when he first lands here, probably need to keep this knee this foot just a little bit further back. There we go. Give it just a little bit of something. I kind of want to work on this line right here. His hips are kind of doing this business right on this vertical line right there. So I, I don't want to stray too far from it. I want to stay on that line if I can help it. There we go. Okay. We're getting there. And then in this section right here, this is we're going to have a lot more overlap right here. This is where he will be straightening up quite a bit. And the head will come up a little bit. Um, and then the one after that, again, this is one of those things where he comes down, you could just put a key there and start moving on. But I know that when he comes down, he doesn't just hit and die. He comes down and he's going to hold it a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and build that other key right now. Um, because I know it's going to be neat. It's, I have to put it in there sometime. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in now. It's, that's that's pretty much my philosophy. I know it's got to be in there sometime, so let's go ahead and put it in now. All right, so he's down a little bit more. Now we can kind of bend him over a little bit more. It's part of that whole holding bit. And his head's kind of jacking forward there a little bit too much. Some of that may be because he's a little too straightened up right here. Okay. And again, to fix that sort of deal, just kind of counter rotate these two things. So he's bending, but he's staying kind of in that same vertical space. Okay. All right. I don't like how his hips are kind of kicking to the side right here, so I'm just going to nudge him over. Okay. I think now's a good time to go ahead and hit save on this. Alright, so we're done saving. Alright, come back here and just take a look at what he does here. Now, this is where things get really kind of goofy. With the feet. But I, I think I want to go ahead and bring the feet and just get done with the feet today um, with with this with this particular video I want to get the feet done all the way through the end um, the feet and the core and we can do the hand business on top because the hands are they work in concert with the body but 
it's it's like you can just kind of turn them off right now and just kind of work on this core and and that that will be enough okay so it does this little deal right there and then the feet let me look at my breakdown here my my uh, my previous breakdown so we got this down we're done with that so now here we kind of do this deal where we take a look at um, my breakdown his um, I have his hips going up here and I have his left foot going back and the right foot kind of kicking forward okay um, so let's go ahead and just kind of build that out so he's down here again I like to key everything so that I don't, I'm not missing any pieces um, the hips kind of go up this foot kind of kicks forward as it comes in it goes forward maybe kind of easier to get in here and look at it and he's gonna have to come on come up this way and what he's doing is kinda like a it's kinda like a pre moonwalk sort of deal his as he's as his hips are popping up the feet are kinda doing their thing underneath him So he's kind of comes down here, pops, and then he really kicks it up quite a bit. And as he jumps up, as he jumps, this foot kind of coming across and forward, and this one's kind of coming in and back. All right, we can kind of see that right here. He pops up, he goes down, and then they come together. And as they come together, that's when he does this deal okay so I missed this right there so let me go ahead and build that in because I don't want to miss that because it just doesn't seem like this doesn't seem like there's any weight to it so I'm gonna take all this business and I'm gonna just move it over and I'm gonna build another one of these right in here where the feet come together again and the knees come together and he just kinda closes his stuff off and he gets tight with it see uh, okay duty do it comes up the feet come together this one right there we will get rid of the rotation so that foot's flat so that they just come they pop together real nice and he become he goes into this nice straight thing here straightens up pretty good this is one of those instances where I'm probably gonna limit the um, the overlap to the head because I want to keep you know create this nice BAM contrast right there I'm gonna keep pushing this just a little bit more all right So as he jumps, I'm just working on the drag of the head right here. All right, so he comes in like so. Then he, you know, let's let's take a look at this. As he comes up, there there's some business here with his hips, where there's some really really subtle business going on with his hips for every little step. Um, I may or may not try to capture that, but I don't think I'm going to try and capture it right in this section. Um, if I get it, I get it, but it may be something I have to save for later. There are times where I do save stuff for later because I, you know, I can't get my head around it right this second. Let's see, so he kind of comes up. Okay, as he comes together, wow, that's really tricky. 
There's an up where his feet are still on the ground. Ah, uh, okay. I'm getting it now. His feet are still wide and his hips are down. Then just his hips come up as the feet just start to come together. And by the time the feet are fully together, the hips are back down again. Let me go ahead and capture that because to me that's that's pretty important. So as he between here and here, I think we need that little something. So again, I'm going to select all this business and I'm going to move it over one. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of recreate Do a little bit of this, and what I'm going to do is kind of cheat these um, so that they're kind of like the next drawing. And we can probably move the hips up quite a bit more, and maybe even get the ball of the feet kicked in here. So there's a there's a there's a bit of a jump here. Um, keep working that jump and the feet are kinda wide but he's well, I don't like that just kinda keep working with the ball of his feet kinda keep pushing this up and then right here he's down So the jump needs to actually be higher still, and the ball of the feet need to be higher still. And you can even kind of get them up in the air so that there's that sense of pushing off there. Um, don't like how they're rotated out like I had before, so I'm going to kind of keep that simple. He's up. Probably need to move him forward a little bit. Straighten him up a little bit. There we go. Okay, so he's down. He hops up. And he lands down again, although how his hips are traveling in space is not, not real clean. Kind of want to again work on that straight line deal. Yeah, that's better. And then you can kind of come down a little bit. So he's down there, and then here he just needs to go up again because it's like he's doing a little jump. And as he does his jump, um, that's when he starts doing the. So every time he does his foot slide, it's like a little, little hip you know in his in his hips a little bit of a jump in his hips so it's one of it's one of those things you have to kind of figure out and i'm spending a ton of time you'll notice working on the hips and the footwork that's something when you're doing when you're doing complex physical animation that is moving in space spend a lot of time on what i call this primary tripod okay these three things everything else can kind of play on top of it and to a certain extent you can layer things. This is probably as layered as I get when it comes to, you know, kind of building out animation. I generally like to see my entire pose together like a complete drawing, but for really complex stuff like this, it's it's sometimes you just have to break it down. You have to make smaller pieces or else you just can't get the whole thing digested. So, I get I really worry about those that primary area and then I worry about the major overlap um, and the curves in the torso and that's that's like the that's the beef if you can get that work in the arm stuff on top of it, it's almost you know it's it's almost not a problem so he's down he comes up he lands maybe a little bit forward okay this is a good time to kind of check it in the in the perspective view to see if there's any places where I'm kind of creating goofy sort of mechanics. You know, like he's a little bit too forward there. And again, a little too forward there because it feels like he's off balance. 
And as he jumps up, yeah, he can jump up and forward a little bit. Maybe not, just not as much. Okay. So what does that look like here? There's there's right and then there's correct. Okay. Um, I always go for right, not correct. What's the difference? Correct is what's physically correct. Okay, the hips should be doing this. If you study motion analysis of, uh, of, of all the different video pieces and things like that, um, you know, there's things that are correct. Like, that's physically correct. It's accurate. Okay? And then there's what's right, which is what feels right. You know, what, what feels like it's got the right kind of motion and energy and stuff. So that's, that's what I focus on, is making sure that the stuff feels right and is not necessarily accurate or correct. Um, you want it to have a kind of correct-ishness, but, all right. So there's that little bit right there. We can do this little shuffle business. Actually, that he straightens out right there doesn't bother me that much. Uh, would like to have this forward just a bit more. Probably would like this to be flattened out just a bit. There we go. So as he jumps up, now let's work in some of this overlap right here. And then he kind of straightens up back right here. Uh, the head pops back too far right there. See how there's a huge change in the scale of the head? So, tells me I need to do something here with it. Comes forward still a little bit too far right there. Maybe do something like this. Compresses on the way up. heads really jacked forward there so what I'm gonna do is this is one of those instances where I will I will use this IK head to my advantage just to kinda of keep things simple and again create good lines right here Okay, the head's fairly simple and clean right there. Not perfect, but we'll work with it. Alright. Um. And take a look at this thing again. So he does that one right there. So when he brings this foot back, it's not actually even on the ground. It's kind of up in the air while well, that one's kind of doing its thing. Well, we're going to kind of borrow from that. He's hopped up, and then when he's, you know, here again, we have to kind of work that, that down bit. And then this guy is flat on the ground again. And it's starting to slide back because it's holding the weight while this one's back and up in the air like he's doing a little bit of a jig with it okay and so this guy kinda comes back get his knee in like so Do down up on the slide and then land. And we can probably keep this forward just a little bit and in. And I'm just going to kind of cheat it back to where it was.
and do a little bit of a slide right there. And push this just a little bit. All right, so the hips go up and then down. And as they go up, they're forward just a bit much. And again, they're forward just a bit much. Do do do. All right. Looking at this again. And so he does this little thing and he, he just does that right there. He comes forward with it. And then he kicks back again. So he just kind of does another one of those little moonwalk steps. Little hop moonwalk steps. So let's get him forward here. Um, in this instance, I probably will borrow this hip up right here. And I'll just put it over here. And I'll kick this forward. Get the knee, you know, get that heel up a little bit. Um, take this guy and just sort of slide him back. There we go. This may, to help it read from this camera angle, I'm going to have to kick it out just a little bit more and play games with it a little bit. There we go. He still feels a little far back right here, like he's kind of, you know, it's, 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 it's a hard balance. Sometimes he feels too far back, sometimes he feels too far forward. All right. So we got that. And then we just go ahead and do it again where this guy kind of comes um, comes in flat like this. This one kicks back up in the air. Because this foot's now kind of doing the little moonwalk thing back. Get that knee out. And the knee comes, you know, the hips come down a little bit. This foot right there, it doesn't feel like it's kind of coming back in a straight line, so I want to give that a sense of where it needs to be, like it's supporting his weight the right way. And there are, we, well, there's actually the necessity for probably another drawing between here and here, where he's still up and this foot kicks back. Um, I'm not going to build that in right now. I just need to, to make note of it because it feels a little weightless right now. Like he's just like he's literally floating as things happen with his feet. And we don't we don't want that feeling to, to persist. He's down. He's up. It's kind of down and over. Probably would help to kind of go this way and kind of counter-rotate him back this way. And then as he comes up, kind of kick him back that way. Up. Do do do. I just don't like how far back that's going. I don't. I don't like how that's moving. See how it just pops right there. Everything feels pretty good, and then bam. I just don't like it. That's a little better. Maybe kick that about that way. Give it a little bit more clearance on the silhouette. Again, that's that's that feels right, even though I'm almost positive it's not accurate. It's not too shabby. So that's that's the the victory of the right over the correct. All right. Again, select everything and key it so I don't have any missing holes uh, on on objects because I don't I don't like having like keys on one part and not on another because then it just gets really messy later on. Um, let's take a look again at. 
there's a little kick right here where his foot kind of comes out and then he does this little jump into that again I think what I'm gonna do is simplify this I'm, I'm gonna kind of do he's got here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take this this foot I'm gonna slide it back and I'm gonna have him come down and then jump again and then land like that okay so again this is one of those instances where I'm gonna go ahead and streamline things and maybe not have that foot kick back quite so far I mean I know I just built it out but I think what I'm gonna do is let me think here Da -da -da -da. Thinking out loud, or actually not out loud. One, so there's the one, two. I'm just not liking this, how this slides right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, bring that back where. It was off the ground, and that, that was there was a certain aspect of it I didn't like. So I'm going to mark the heel as right there. In the previous one, I just want to put the heel right there. So he's, it only looks like he's kind of kicking it forward, but he's actually planting. And that could be a reason why I didn't like that either. It's way up in the air there. There we go. Again, it's one of those things where I have to kind of check it in another view to make sure that it just has the right... Oh, that feels like it's got weight now. Well, I knew there was a reason why it was feeling weightless. And let me see, just kind of cheat that a little bit so it's not sliding quite so far. probably take this and, and cheat it back too so it's not sliding so far and take this guy and kind of split the difference between them all right and we just have to reload for this big bounce so come like this I'm just gonna borrow this key for the foot and bring it over here we're going to reload for this big bounce that we're going to rebuild here. All right. There's some there's a lot of a lot of noise and jitter in the head. I'll have to clean that out later. Um, a couple of ways to do that. Mostly is just simplifying the how the thing is moving in space. Um, and the simplest, you know, the simplest way would just be grab the IK head, but it would start to look kind of weird, like his head isn't really attached to his body, and that's that's not a that's never a good thing. So it's all right if it moves up and down in a in a in a in a line right here. I just don't like it doing this all over the place because it just becomes hard to follow and it feels kind of jittery. Doody doody do. And he can reload for this big push right here for the big jump. But again, we want it to kind of feel like he's sort of in the same space. And we can kind of cheat him forward right here just to kind of anticipate this bit. Now, it looks kind of weird like he's a chicken scratching at the dirt right here. And that's sort of the action of what's going on, but we kind of remember that there's also, you know, there's also going to be business with that 
as he does this, there's kind of some stuff going on with the hands. So it's kind of like he's doing this little walk thing in place. And like I said, it was a moonwalk before the moonwalk. Yeah. All right, so he does this little bit. Okay. Doodly doodly do. Reloads. Let's go ahead and set another key down here to really sell this. Compress them down just a bit more. And I want to build more, um, more bend in the body right here. So again, I have to kind of do this counter rotation thing. So he's really loading up right here. Oops. Maybe kick that knee in just a little bit so we get a cleaner read on the silhouette. And notice how his head's coming forward but then kicking to the to the right here. If I step through it, it comes forward and boink to the right. So simple enough. just to keep things clean. Clean lines on, on the track of the eyes is really important to me because it's it's just one of those things where if you can keep the eyes clean uh, the audience is able to, it just gives a, a feeling of quality to the work. Alright, so he's just kinda going up and down then forward. Do 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 do. Okay. Running out of some keys here, so I'll just add some more. I'll bring these up like so, so we're not dealing with quite so much stuff. All right, this is probably a good place to kind of stop right here. An hour of me mumbling at the camera. Uh, again, really, the the highlights of this of this month's video is really really take the time to work out the primary tripod of your of your animation whenever you're doing stuff complicated like this just break it down you know if the arms are integral to the motion okay bring them into the equation but you notice I kind of turn them off because they can kind of layer in on their own and while I generally don't layer in animation um, if I were doing this traditional animation I wouldn't draw the arms right now I just wouldn't I would just I would work those in later on it's really about um, getting the weight right in this in this primary tripod uh, or you know not it's not a tripod but this this kind of this triangle of the hips to the feet and then the second area of great focus is the line of action um, on the body making sure that you're getting good overlaps as he goes up and down as he goes down he's stretching and as he's going up he's compressing you know so as he goes up he kind of crunches in on himself and he gets at the top, he stretches out, and then he goes down, he really stretches out, and then he crunches, you know. So you kind of work this overlapping action in the drawings. And then the third area of focus is making sure that the head, even though it's up and down and doing things, that it's fairly clean. It does So it's not going all over the place, because that makes things feel weightless, and it makes it feel like it just doesn't have production value, and it just it just doesn't feel there okay so it's really important to kind of work those three things out so that's where we're at with this one um, pick it up again in 54 and um, see you then I knew that I would not.